So, you're gonna draw a swoop, two little swoops like that. This is your greater <coughs> curve. curve. If there's a greater curve, there must be a lesser curve. lesser curve. So this is your stomach, yes? Yes. Yes. There's a big muscle at the top that's called the diaphragm. Everybody, all at once, diaphragm, which is a Muscle. And y'all are worse than yesterday. Yesterday was loud. Muscle. Thank muscle. You. Thank you. Muscle. Responsible for? Breathing. Thank you. Breathing. How important is breathing? Very, very, very important. important. Well, you kind of need it. the most important. It's a good thing. You might need it. <laughs> you might okay. need it a bit. Let me show you guys something real quick. You want to take a deep breath and hold your breath. Pinch your nose for as long as you can. It hurts. As long as you can. Don't breathe. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't, don't pass that one. No one passes that one. Yeah. Let me tell you something real quick. Let me explain something to all of y'all really quickly. No matter how bad you feel, no matter how shitty your day is, that's one. No matter how dark it seems, like no matter how bad you feel about yourself, and you think like life's not worth living. <coughs> You do this exercise for me. You hold your breath, close your nose, and try to suffocate yourself. And after about a minute and a half, your brain will say, forget you and your little petty worries. I need to breathe. And you will start breathing again. Which means what? The drive to live is very, very powerful. Okay, so one more time, everyone take a deep breath. And let it go. Okay, now, that breath is very important, yes? But what's more important than that breath? The next, the next, the next one. The next breath. <coughs> you understand that, right? If the next breath doesn't come, <coughs> it's, <coughs> it's, 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 it's over. <laughs> it's done, right? So don't take your breathing for granted. You have to remember this. Always take your focus back on your breathing when times are tough. <clears throat> that is the essence of meditation right there. No matter what, how hard your day was, if you can sit still for a second and just think about your breathing and just go, I am still breathing. This weekend when you're recovering from surgery, you go, I am still breathing. It's all good. It will get better. This too shall pass. Because if that next breath doesn't come, you in trouble, girl. You got it? Okay, so we take care of our breathing and our diaphragm, all right? There's a muscle at the bottom. What's that called? Hyloris. 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 That leads into your small intestine called your duodenum, yes? Um, this is your esophagus coming down through your chest, right? Your esophagus runs down the middle of your chest here, right next to your heart. These are your lungs. Where it comes through the hiatus, the opening of your diaphragm. GI junction. GI junction. Yes. It's a GE junction. Yes, GE junction. Gastroesophageal junction. All right, there's a big layer of fat down here. It's called the? Omentum. Omentum. And it is fat, <coughs> right? There's a big purple organ up here called the liver, liver, liver. liver. And I drew it small on this side of your body, but I've seen livers take up the whole belly cavity all the way down to the belly button. Okay, <coughs> that's terrible. Now your liver is very dynamic. It opens, it expands, it contracts, and it can get infiltrated with a lot of fat. That's what's called a fatty, fatty liver. Fatty liver. Someone write this down for me. <clears throat> it's the fat on the inside that's killing you. I'll remember that. You have fat inside your liver. So you have hold on, make you have fat inside your liver. You have fat around your heart. You have fat in this omentum that's suppressing your pancreas. You have fat inside your arteries that's keeping blood flow from going to your brain. That's a stroke keeping blood to go into your heart. That's called a heart attack, okay? So it's the fat on the inside that's killing y'all. 
And you and all your juicy burgers, look at the juice run up that burger, baby. Just remember that's going inside your arteries. Just remember that. And if you choose to put that inside your body, that's okay. All right, so you get a fatty liver. There's also a purple organ up here called the? Spleen. Spleen. What's the problem with the spleen? It bleeds. It bleeds. It bleeds. That's number two. <laughs> All right, so two steps to the sleeve gastrectomy. What's the first step? Disconnect the omentum. Disconnect the omentum. So I'm going to take a special gun and disconnect the omentum. Do I remove the omentum? No. No, that's a very big surgery. That's usually a cancer surgery for people with lymphomas and, and stomach cancers and stuff. <clears throat> so I just disconnected. Then I have a stapler, fire six rows of metal titanium alloy staples. Cuts in the middle, so three stay. I usually start down here at your antrum. I go all the way up to your D-junction. So three rows stays on your sleeve side. Three on your specimen, specimen, specimen side. side. Why is it called the specimen? Because it's good. So no my stomach. I take out. What percentage? 75%. 75% is gone, removed, okay? I do not put in a sleeve. We create sleeves. So this is gone, take that out. Okay, everyone got that? The staples are made out of a titanium alloy. So do they ever dissolve? No. Now you know the answer to that question. They stay with you forever, okay? So we're gonna talk about the number one complication we worry about is what? Leaks. Leaks. Angela, what is it? <coughs> leak. Okay. If it's going to leak, where is it most likely going to leak? GE junction. There you go. Up here at the corner at the GE junction, okay? <coughs> and y'all forget you have a lot of fat in this area. There's <coughs> fat up here. There's fat along down here too. So it can always be tricky to see. So what you want to do if you're pre-op, right? You want, Rebecca, lose as much weight as you can. You gotta get all this fat out of here for me. You gotta do as best as you can to shrink your liver. Now some of you who have friends or loved ones who have surgery elsewhere, they'll say, well my surgeon didn't make me lose weight. Yeah, y'all are nodding. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. That's not a good thing. That, that's not something to be bragging about. Y'all should all make an effort to lose as much weight as possible prior to surgery. Every month we have one or two patients who lose so much they don't they don't want to have surgery. I thought about it. Okay. Yeah, he did really good, right? Um, so you want to get rid of this fat on the inside. The number one complication is a leak. If you have a leak, Will you be happy and go lucky? No. no. You will be really, sick. really septic, sick, yes. You'll be in the hospital five or six weeks. weeks in the hospital. I have patients that I hear about that are still dealing with a week, uh, with a leak after a year. I know of a fellow that just came out of the hospital from a year's worth of treatment. For so, so because this is a bad thing, we want to erase it because Dr. Vaughn believes in the law of attraction. We don't want <laughs> For those of you who had surgery on Monday, don't want to attract that <laughs> to you. But you've only so had one. You're what I want to do is talk about the other complication, which is bleeding, another complication. Okay, bleeding. So where can you bleed from? Staple line. So you can bleed from your staple line. Your spleen, where else? Your liver. Your liver. Yes, the liver. So surgeons putting in the liver retractors can crack the liver, break the liver. I've seen that happen. Liver bleeds a lot, hard to stop. So you really want to stick to your OptiFast, really lose as much weight as you can on this 1200 calorie week. Really bust it out so you shrink this liver down. Don't cheat on your preoperative diet to shrink your liver, okay? Um, where else can you bleed? This part. You can, where I disconnect you through your omentum, there's a lot of blood flow in your omentum. There's a lot of veins and arteries. So you can bleed out of there, right? You can bleed along the staple line. You can bleed from your incisions, sometimes into your muscle. Like if I go through your belly button, sometimes I have to go through some muscle layers there. And um, you can bleed from there. Now, the old joke in surgery is this. Doc, don't worry, all bleeding eventually stops. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Yeah, when you're out of blood. 
I don't like that scenario. So, but this does happen every every a couple of times a year. We'll have someone who drops their blood count too much, and we have to uh, watch them very closely. Now, you can bleed just from bad luck, like uh, from just because it's surgery. But we also give you blood thinners around the time of surgery. So before you go back to the OR, to the operating room, you're gonna get a Lovenox shot, which is a blood thinner. Now you're sitting there thinking, well, that's crazy. Why are you giving me a blood thinner if you're about to cut on me? You would think you wanna do the opposite. But why do we give you blood thinners before surgery and while you're in the hospital? What are we trying to prevent? What are we trying to prevent? Right, preventing blood clots. Now what's the problem with blood clots? There's nothing wrong with blood clots. The only thing, there's nothing wrong with blood clots unless they do what? Travel. Travel, Travel to where? Your lungs. 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 Or your heart. No, just your lungs. And what's that called? Pulmonary embolism. A PE, a pulmonary embolism, <coughs> which turns out that is actually the number one killer for people having weight loss surgery. I had 10 of them. That's the number one killer of people not having not weight loss surgery. Yeah. Them, it is not fun. So what causes blood clots? Um, well, if you have a blood disorder that could have it, some people have genetic mutations yeah. that cause it. But if you don't have that problem, then your risk factors include number one, obesity, number two, abdominal surgery. <laughs> Which is basically all of y'all which is bariatric surgery, right? So we're putting you in harm's way. So what we've, what the studies have shown is that we give you blood thinners, we, decreases, we decrease your chances of having blood clots and eventually pulmonary embolisms, okay? And that's the number one killer. So what we need y'all to do is when you're in the hospital and when you get home this weekend is to walk a lot and when you stop to really hold on to something and pump your calves on your go up and down like this, right? Because it's your calves is where, and legs. And also don't stay seated with your legs bent, like your long car drives and airplane rides. Staying with your legs bent will also increase your chance for having blood clots too. That's why we want you to stop every hour, walk, pump your calves. Got it? Okay. Um, very important talk, bleeding. Dr. Vaughn here. If you like this video, I hope you will come learn from me live in person at my first ever Dr. V weekend workshop. I'm calling it Unleash the Sleeve Within. All right. So it's in Albuquerque, March 23rd through the 25th. There's a link to it below the video. I hope to see you there. Cool. Bye.